Hello and welcome to 2020 Vision, 20th Ward News and Views. I'm Barbara Holt, Chief of Staff to Alderman Willie B. Cochran, and I'm filling in for Alderman Cochran today as your host. We have a very, very special show. The topic is health and fitness, a new you for the new year. And our guests are Dr. Monica Peake from the University of Chicago Medical Center, Tanya Roberson, also from the University of Chicago Medical Center, and Sadiq Muhammad, who is a personal trainer. First, I'd like for you to... My name is Sadiq Muhammad. I'm the head of Chicago Fit for Life, a personal trainer that works throughout the city of Chicago. I'm the author of Confessions of the Personal Trainer, and I do radio broadcasts throughout Chicago as well, giving health and fitness tips on a weekly basis. I want to thank you all for taking time from your busy schedules to join us today for this program that I think will be a, a great different way or learning how to count carbs and, and eat more nutritiously, then it's, it's easier to sustain that. But the, the big hook is trying to sort of get over that hump. And it's, it, it's all about education. A lot of individuals just don't understand what to do and they don't understand how to do it. So they become victims of, of their habits. Um, going to a restaurant every single morning and having two cups of coffee as opposed to one. Uh, thinking that you don't have time for exercise, or I've even heard things as it's too expensive to be healthy. But w with the work that the three of us provide, we actually educate individuals on how to make healthy lifestyle changes and make things happen. I've seen it, some of my clients train for a marathon in under an hour a day. And I don't know anyone that doesn't watch at least an hour of TV every day. <laughs> so <I do>. you <laughs> health things in addition to providing some information about some of the social services that people need. You talked about the uh, barriers to getting people to change their lifestyles. Mm -hmm. What are some specific things that you've been doing to break down those barriers? Well, well, m me, me personally, I, uh, I don't call them barriers. I call them excuses. So that's the first. <laughs> so that's the first thing I do is I, I make someone aware that they that they're an excuse. If it's a barrier, then it then it's real. But if it's an excuse, it's made up. So uh, something like, I, I don't have the time. Um, if you're an individual who can watch TV, then you have time to exercise. Someone who says, I don't have the money. If you're someone that can walk, then you're someone that has the, you have the money to exercise because that's free. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've heard such things as, I don't know how to exercise. Uh, if you're watching this TV show, then there are other TV shows as well that show how to exercise and show different movements. I have over 100 videos uh, on my YouTube channel available for free for any, anyone that would like to know about how to exercise or what to do in the gym or what to do in your home and we'll put that information oh, on I have diabetes well. I'm gonna end up on dialysis or mm -hmm. I have diabetes I'm gonna you know have a stroke you're at increased risk but if you can control your sugars and control your blood pressure your uh, blood pressure and control your cholesterol that does not have to be your fate. And you can do that through both uh, eating and exercise absolutely and what about the families of those who are uh, affected by these uh, maladies how important is it to work with them if they're you're getting the individual to try to affect the change in lifestyle a lot of times. And not just families, but peers, Absolutely. friends who uh, put pressure on people to continue in the way that they've been living. Well, well one, of the things, one of the things I have this, I have a quote, I have a quote in my upcoming book where um, an individual is having a conversation. They say, well, I, I have this because it runs in my family. <laughs> and then response is, no, no one runs in your family. <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a long-standing joke. Um, one of the things that happens is that um, <laughs> usually the, the dietary habits and the exercise habits of one individual is quote-unquote contagious amongst everyone mm -hmm. in the family. So everyone in the family usually takes on the same body shape or usually eats the same or if they're inactive, everyone's inactive. Everyone watching TV together and different things like that. So, uh, so when you're dealing with such diseases, with diseases that affect a, a person's health and things that can be changed through diet and exercise, you have to address everyone in the family. If someone in your family has type 2 diabetes, then most likely you're going to have type 2 diabetes. And what happens is that you have to make the choices along with the individual who has it. So everyone in the family should change uh, together or you become an enabler. I won't personally train someone if they have a spouse who is completely inactive because mm -hmm. we can only make as many results as the person will let you because they, they're an enabler. So you're not going to have broccoli while they're sitting there eating fried chicken. So, so you have to work together. Everyone in the family mm -hmm. has to be on the same page or, or it really won't work. Absolutely, absolutely. With and moderate amounts of physical activity, everybody doesn't have to run a marathon, although it would be great if you could. Um, everybody can eat well and eat healthy. I, I, I couldn't agree more uh, with what Dr. P said. And one of the things that I give every single one of my clients from start of the new year, and I got it from Thomas Edison, whenever he would have an idea for a new invention, 
his idea, he would call a press conference and he would tell everyone who would listen about this idea for his new invention. Because what would happen is when he would inform everyone of his new invention, everywhere he would go, people would ask about it. Was it done yet? Have you created mm. it yet? And I try to use that Create a buzz. Yeah, creating a buzz. You have to create an exercise buzz. You tell everyone what your goal is. <laughs> Call people on the phone. Tell them I'm going to lose 100 pounds. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I'm going to exercise every day. You tell everyone. And what will happen is people will keep you on track. You know, write it on your Facebook page, tweet about it, and everyone will ask you, well, did you go to the gym today? Oh, no, I didn't go to the gym today, but I'm going tomorrow. So have everyone assist you with staying on track. And that's one, that's one piece of advice that I give everyone, one of my suggestion. clients. It's really simple, yeah. and I think it anyone can do it. was a group decision, group, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's because excellent. in our classes, we know that we had a lot of questions about what to eat. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a lot of food myths that makes good nutrition overwhelming when it's actually simple. Today, around 30% of individuals that eat, and it's higher, it's actually higher on the south side of Chicago, they don't, they don't cook their own meals. So they eat out of a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So uh, with something like a grocery, with a grocery tour, that is, that's so important because it'll make someone that want to cook at home or want to eat a home-cooked meal as opposed to going to a restaurant. I tell all my clients that restaurants, it doesn't matter if you cook the same food at home or if it's in a restaurant, it's going to be higher calorie in a restaurant. The food has to be preserved longer than a grocery store. This means higher salt, higher sodium. Mm. This means your body's going to retain more water and your weight's going to go up. So and you can take a, pressure. and your blood pressure. <laughs> so you can take a turkey sandwich from a restaurant like Chili's uh, and, and fries, and it would be around. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sadiq, I was going to ask, uh, how did you get into the field that you're in now, personal fitness? Um, well, it was, it was really forced upon me, uh, being extremely athletic my entire life. Uh, mm -hmm. By age 16, I had already broke the Junior Olympic record, and by age 17, I had had a um, full scholarship to DePaul University, where I went on to become the most outstanding performer. I, I in what, um, uh, in what sport? Track and field. Track and field? Yeah, track mm -hmm. and field. I'm, just, I'm really fast. Like, it's hard for me to just sit right here. That's how fast I am. <laughs> um, and, uh, there you go. <laughs> what, what happened with me is that I never understood how someone could not be athletic. And I had a hard time understanding that. And uh, I would see people all the time, and I would see them struggle with their weight, and I would see them struggle in the gym. And, I, and, and I, my Too heart... Too many times we're so busy trying to, to get out the doctor's office to just say yes, doctor, and do whatever that we don't really understand what's happening. And these are major decisions about our health. Mm -hmm. and That's so something that people have to learn. They haven't been taught that absolutely. in their families or in school. About Particularly how to our people. Exactly. We're taught to sort of be quiet and yes and no, and, and that's yeah, not right. That's not right. Doctors, uh, it's a two-way street, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's I, why we work with doctors, too. That's mm -hmm. true. And I, and I have, and I have um, just for New Year's resolutions, exercise and fitness, anyone trying to get in shape for the new year, this is one piece of advice that I give everyone. Uh, the journey of a thousand miles, start with one step, unless you have a car. And I tell everyone <laughs> that if you can hire a health and fitness professional or someone that has information regarding something, I know people who have tried to lose weight for 10, 15, 20 years, it's the same 20 pounds, and then we'll work out for two to three months and then the weight's gone. I had one guy who had been overweight his whole life and within nine months we lost 72 pounds. And he had broke down when we had got on the scale. He had got really, really emotional. And I said, what's wrong? He said, I waited so long for something that was so easy to do. So he missed out on a lot, a large portion of his life being healthy, being fit, just because he waited to get with someone that had more exactly knowledge than he did. You saved me after you just ate all that terrible food and then you did all these things to your body. Uh, you have to have an understanding. And as we're working with churches and we're working with preachers, then we're seeing a change in the body of Christ, individuals who just normally wouldn't focus on exercise because it's not talked about. Mm -hmm. It's not talked about. John 10, 10 says he came that we may have life and have life in abundance. Mm -hmm. So how can we have an abundance of life if we're not having an abundance of health? So what I want to see is the exercise community partner with the churches, and that's currently what we're trying to do. How are you identifying the churches to participate? Well, well, well the churches that will uh, make themselves available. So uh, every, church mm -hmm. isn't, every church isn't as open as some. We've seen, uh, I mentioned some churches, New Joy Divine has been open, uh, uh, New Faith. Uh, uh, truth and Deliverance, Full Gospel, and, and, and then where I'm at, Victory Christian under Apostle Carl White. Some churches are making themselves more available, so what we're doing is creating a model that we'll be able to send other individuals out and apply to, to any church that will want it. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Churches, schools, 